King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth, and where the burdened pastures grow with good celestial feedeth. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil I fear no ill, with thee dear Lord beside. staff my comfort still thy cross before to guide me thou spreadst a table in my sight thy ancient grace bestoweth and oh what transport of delight from thy pure chalice floweth. And so through all the length of days thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house forever. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and in peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, Make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? 
Little children, let us love, not in word or in speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth, and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. There is a wonderful illustration which, if you were on social media this week, you would have seen, and I will describe for you. A shepherd is working very hard to pull a sheep out of what is essentially a ditch that has been dug. It's very narrow and the sheep's legs can't touch the bottom and he can't fit through the width of the of the trench and so he's just kind of suspended midair and the shepherd's behind him and has a belt on his foot and is pulling him out and pulling and pulling and, and the sheep is struggling the sheep is fighting with everything it has and finally the shepherd gets the sheep out of this trench and the sheep sort of jumps up jumps across the trench just three large bounds leaps in the air and lands right back into the trench, right back into the situation he was in when it all started. And with that, I said, uh, commented when I shared this on social media, that when Jesus compared us to sheep, he was not being complimentary. The reality is that sheep are pig-headed and not very smart, and they get themselves constantly in trouble, which is why they need a human around them to make sure that they don't stay in trouble or lose their lives from their own stupidity. Jesus wasn't being complimentary by calling us sheep, but he was saying something about um, us and himself as shepherd. When he, when he calls himself the good shepherd, he's making something real for us. The hired hand might think, you know, let's just take this little sheep from the, from the social media post who is so stupid that he fights being rescued and then as soon as he's rescued jumps three times and jumps right back into ex the exact same problem he had the first time stuck in a trench with no way out let's think about that sheep and let's think about a good shepherd versus a hired hand the hired hand might get tired of this stupid sheep getting himself constantly in trouble and say there there you did it to yourself just stay there just stay there, starve to death, see if I care. But instead, the good shepherd, knowing that the sheep is stubborn and knowing that the sheep is stupid, we don't see this in the video, but would have gone the 25 feet further that the sheep had bounded and gotten the belt out and tied it around a back leg and hauled the sheep out of trouble yet again. You see, deep in our sense of justice, we have this idea that somehow some of us deserve help and some of us don't deserve help. And when we're stupid and get ourselves into trouble because of our own stupidity, we don't deserve help. Well, praise God, that's not how the Good Shepherd operates. That's not how Jesus operates. It might be how, I don't know, the law or <clears throat> employers or lots of other human institutions operate, but it's not how Jesus operates. When, when I posted that that video, many of my friends commented and some said, well, here's my relationship with God summed up in 25 seconds. Because more often than not, we're just like that sheep. We're stubborn, we're miserable, we're pig-headed, we get ourselves into trouble, and somehow when God comes along to try and help us or save us, we kick, we scream, 
We yell we don't want it to happen and we are dragged kicking and streaming out of the trouble we've gotten into only to bound away and get right back into the same trouble. If nothing else, when we think about the infinity that is God, God's omniscience, God's omnipresence, God's omnipotence, maybe we should add omnipatience. The fact that Jesus as the Good Shepherd is patient with us and forgives us and comes to us again and again and again and again and calls us by name and reminds us that we are his and reminds us using his voice calls out to us and says you are mine even when we are pig-headed and stubborn and run away but you see that's because Jesus is love God is love and Jesus is love and that love incarnate is love and action it's not enough just to say, oh, I love someone. That love has to be expressed somehow. And that expression with Jesus is a love of action. An action that was willing to sacrifice his own life for ours. A clear exchange. A good shepherd who lays his life down for the sheep. Sheep who don't deserve it. Sheep who are too stupid to notice. Sheep who are too stubborn to care. Christ lays his life down for those sheep. When I was in seminary, one of our professors talked about Good Shepherd Sunday as the danger of preaching what he called lammies and sheepies in the fieldies sermons. That is, comforting you with the idea of fluffy lambs uh, trotting nicely next to ponds, drinking the waters and eating on green grass on an idyllic day. He said, that is a wonderful image for a static um, stained glass window, but it's not reality. The herd is always moving. The flock is constantly moving and pushing on the edges. It is constantly getting itself into trouble. It has to be guarded on all sides. And whether we like it or not, it's not, uh, the flock is not necessarily a pleasant or a cooperative group. But it's this group that the Good Shepherd lays his life down for. It's this group, this flock, to which we all belong. All of us, stubborn, angry, stupid, hateful, miserable sheep, as well as the good ones. The secret of grace is that God has turned his gracious love toward the undeserving. And that will always be a scandal. It'll always be a scandal because it never seems to make sense to us. Our sense of justice, our sense of patience, our sense of inconvenience even, is always injured by the idea that someone wouldn't recognize that we've done them a favor, and then they do something stupid. Jesus, thank God, is not like that. Jesus has that infinite omnipatience with us. His love is never-ending. He doesn't condemn he loves and puts that love in action in our day-to-day -day lives. We are the sheep of his pasture. And thank God he is indeed a good shepherd. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. I am the good shepherd and lay down my life for the sheep, says the Lord. The Lord is indeed our shepherd. 
And knowing his care for us, let us pray. For all who shepherd others as bishops, priests, and deacons, for all who pastor and all who are in their care, for Christians threatened and under attack, and all whose ministry feels demanding, for a greater affection and care for one another and in the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in positions of leadership and influence in our world, that they may use that power for good, for an increase in our concern for one another's well-being across all barriers, and for all who are working to build community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are wandering, lost and aimless, with no idea that any good shepherd exists. For those who die unaware that they are precious and valued by the God who loved them into being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died to this earthly life, that the good shepherd who understands what it is to die may bring them safely home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in thankfulness for your shepherding of us and own you as our own good shepherd in whom we are kept safe forever. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to the table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God of loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Shepherd. Amen. Amen. Eucharistic Prayer 2. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared her human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now, now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, watch over the church redeemed by the blood of your Son. May we who share in these holy mysteries come safely to your eternal kingdom, where there is one flock and one shepherd. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory, Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.